We know you're busy and that you can't always find the time to tune in live to the Daily Breakfast Show. So we've handpicked the very best of this past week's news and together with our show sponsors MB Crusher, we're delighted to bring you the Weekend Wrap. In this week's episode, multiple prosecutions over a Welsh demolition death, Case lifts the lid on its new E-series of excavators, and we go into battle with a military-grade excavator. All that and more on the Weekend Wrap. Our TV screens are currently filled with shocking and distressing images from Ukraine as Russia flexes its military muscles. While I prefer the show to be a bit of a light relief and a haven from all of that, the video I'm about to play you does seem both timely and extremely interesting as well. It features a rapid deployment truck-mounted excavator designed specifically for military applications. Take a look at this. Yesterday, I mentioned that I was in the process of producing a new video short on the lack of outrage and anger shown by industry leaders over the various regulation changes with which the sector has been bombarded in recent years. I finished this video just after yesterday's show, and I actually shared it with our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash demolition news. They seem to like it, uh, probably more than the silent industry leaders that it's all about. So while that case uh, launch is going on, let me roll the video for you now.
wake up on a Tuesday morning and think to yourself, I need a German high-reach excavator film to get my day started. Good. Me too. the latest news, views, video and comment from the demolition and construction industry, live and interactive each weekday morning at 10am GMT. Tune in, take part on The Breakfast Show, live. So you've got a power station boiler house to demolish. You could send for the explosives crew retire to a safe distance and watch the drama unfold. But if you have the know-how and the level of exca excavator pulling power, there is another way. All clear to scale now. Damn full.
three, two, one, go, 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 go. It's time. Good job, everybody. Good job. men have received suspended prison sentences after a worker uh, a worker died during a um, church collapse. Scaffold up and father of two, Jeff Pleavy, was crushed to death at the Citadel Church in Splot over in Wales as he worked on its demolition in uh, July 2017. And that's Mr Pleavy there. Uh, the men were sentenced for offences related to health and safety breaches, four, fir uh, four firms of which three of of which three of the men were directors, also received combined fines in excess of £340,000. Uh, Judge Mrs Justice Jefford said each of the defendants bear some degree of responsibility for the sad and unnecessary death of Jeff Pleavy. Uh, Pleavy died when the rear wall of the church gave way as he worked on it. His body was later found in the rubble. 
Prosecutor Andrew Langdon QC said it would have it could have been avoided with proper diligence and that there was significant uh, insufficient sorry insufficient coordination and oversight in the project. The four men and firms received a number of sentences and fines during a hearing at Cardiff Crown Court yesterday. Keith Young received a 45 week sentence suspended for 18 months after being convicted of failing to take necessary steps to ensure a structure does not collapse. He was ordered to pay costs of 66,000 pounds. Stuart Swain was given a 39-week sentence suspended for 15 months after being convicted of failure to discharge his duty. He must pay costs of £25,000. Philip Thomas received a 36-week suspended uh, sentence rather suspended for uh, 15 months after pleading guilty to failure to discharge a duty along with costs of £20,000. Richard Dean and his company were given a 35-week sentence suspended for 15 months after pleading guilty to failure to discharge a duty. He must pay costs costs of £20,000. Uh, Swain scaffolding, of which Stuart Swain was a director, was fined £120,000 with costs of £25,000 after being convicted of failure to discharge a duty. South Wales Safety Consultancy, which had um, Philip Thomas as a director, was fined £97,500 with £17,500 costs after pleading guilty to uh, failure to discharge a duty. NJP Consultant Engineers, where Richard Dean was a director, was fined £93,000 with six and a half thousand pounds in costs and strong partnerships uh, find um, 38,500 pounds with 17 and a half thousand pounds in costs again for failing to discharge a duty. I don't recall ever seeing so many individuals and companies prosecuted over a single incident. Is that a precedent? Could this become the new norm? In the prosecution of accidents and fatalities? Uh, incidentally, if you want more details on that, that um, on that incident and that um, uh, prosecution, you can find that over on uh, demolitionnews.com right now. It's actually our lead story. Those of you that were here yesterday will know that the show was a little bit disjointed as we were trying desperately to keep you abreast of the case excavator launch that was taking place simultaneously. As a result, you may have missed the details of precisely what the launch was all about. So to recap, Case Construction Equipment has announced the launch of its new Case E-Series crawler excavator range. The Case E-Series range includes seven new models from 13 to 30 tonnes. That's the CX-130E, 160E, 180E, 2 210E, 240E, 250E and 300E. Features include new FPT industrial stage 5 compliant engines, enhanced cab design, improved hydraulic controls and settings, machine structure and undercarriage and new full range of case service solutions. I'm going to post the link to more details in the chat in just a second but while I'm doing that let's take a look at these exciting new machines in action. You can find out more about the new E-Series models using the link that is now in the chat. Alternatively, you can watch the entire full-length E-Series excavator launch over on YouTube. Just go over to YouTube and search for Case at Work. Now, while I don't want today's show to turn into a Case fan club, even though I have switched hats for, for reasons that become clear, I do have one other very quick point to add. 
About half an hour before the show started, our friend Ken Hatcher sent me a link to a news story announcing that Casey's parent company, CNH Industrial, has donated an astonishing half a million dollars to support Ukrainians impacted by the ongoing conflict in their country. Uh, in addition, the company is establishing a global fund to which employees can donate. CNH will then match those do uh, those contributions dollar for dollar. Uh, I'm sure this donation doesn't mark co case as unique. I'm sure there are other companies out there doing likewise, and I know that JCB has hit the ball pause button on its activities in Russia. But this is really an admirable stance taken by CNH, um, and I do think they should be applauded for for it. Um, you can find out more about that story over at demolitionnews.com right now where it is the lead story.